Hey, uh, I'm your homeless friend Kai, and uh, this is cooking with your homeless friend Kai. Um, I just got my kitchen set up out at camp, and I wanted to do uh, something wonderful. Uh, went to the food bank today. Um, so, uh, what we got was we got a portobello mushroom cap. Um, four of your regular mushrooms. We have four bell peppers with the uh, caps cut off and the uh, seeds thrown out. And uh, we toss the caps because we're not baking them. We don't have an oven, we have a stove. So we're gonna steam them. We are going to make uh, stuffed bell peppers and a stuffed portobello mushroom. Um, I have one asparagus tip. Uh, one Portuguese sausage. Um, if you don't have refrigeration as I don't, uh, these are vacuum sealed. Uh, I've gone as long as two weeks uh, before I use them and they haven't gone bad. Uh, so uh, yeah, they're vacuum sealed sausages. You're supposed to refrigerate them and I don't recommend not refrigerating them, but uh, I cook everything to a really high temperature, so I make sure I don't get food poisoning. Um, we have some Kirkland Mexican blend shredded cheese. Um, and again, uh, mine's a little clumpy because I don't have refrigeration. Okay. Uh, some Kirkland minced California garlic in the jar. Uh, and some Kirkland real mayonnaise. Um, I have this knife I found by the side of the highway and sharpened uh, a slotted spoon uh, that I got from Walmart for a buck. And my only fork. Uh, if you only have one fork, I recommend keeping it clean, keeping it in the same spot every time. Do not lose it, it's very important. The fork is the most important piece of cutlery. Um, I made my cereal with a fork. I don't have any spoons. Uh, we have a couple of bowls here. Oh, we have some leftover rice from last night. And uh, since I don't have refrigeration, everything I own gets, or everything I eat gets recooked to temperature. So we're going to recook that. Uh, and that and the sausage and the asparagus and the small mushrooms with cheese and well, we'll show you, are going to be the stuffing. Um, first thing, um, we're going to cut our, uh, and prepare our sausage. Um, Savannah! <whistles> Say you want sausage? Savannah! Okay, Savannah's outside. Okay. Now, I don't eat the ends. Uh, I don't like the ends. It's, I mean, I don't mind the casing so much, but I don't like the ends. Can we cut them? So we cut them off and we give them to Savannah. Savannah, here you go. Okay, she loves sausage. Okay, so uh, in our stuffing, we want our sausage to be very, very small. So we're going to cut up the middle. Well, as best as we can. We've got portobello and mushroom insides um, on the cutting board. And then we're going to cut up the middle of each half making quarters or approximating quarters of sausage mm -hmm. and then we're going to dice it
Okay. We have our diced sausage, and I'm going to put that in my stainless steel bowl that I got at Salvation Army. I've uh, got two of them actually. They have these little rings on the side of them, which eventually I'm going to make uh, bowl hooks uh, so I can hang them uh, from up here. Um, I mean, it's, it's nice. I mean, the kitchen is nice. I mean, I really like it. Uh, then we're going to dice up our asparagus tip. Really small. Because we want it to cook quickly. Um, these normally take a really long time to cook until they're soft. Um, so we want as much surface area as possible. get all the asparagus nice and tender before we use it in our stuffing and um, uh -huh. asparagus is going to give us a really nice flavor in with our stuffing Okay, and since we want it to cook for the longest time uh, of any of the uh, stuffing, we were going to put it in with the uh, sausage here. Um, for the uh, mushrooms, we're going to Pop the insides out, or the stems out, and eat those now. <laughs> I like the flavor of the raw mushrooms, and we're not having raw mushrooms with this, so. With the mushrooms, we can just slice them. Uh, since we are going to cook them before we put them in with the stuffing, uh, they'll be nice and tender and mushy. Um. You know, I'm going to give them a couple of uh, little dice cuts, um, just so they fit nicely into the stuffing. Okay, and we have them on our cutting board with the rice, with the cheese. Um, I am going to take, for texture, a scoop of mayonnaise um, it's egg and oil so we're going to use that as a binding agent for stuffing when it gets uh, nice and hot um, it will bind the rice and the sausage mix together so about that much mayonnaise and then put the lid back on we don't have refrigeration out here, so with our mayonnaise, we want to keep the lid off and on as uh, short time as possible. Um, let me get my rag and wipe this off. We want to keep the lid off as short a time as possible um, because as soon as it gets contaminated with bacteria, uh, it goes bad. Uh, if you can avoid bacteria, which I'm trying to do, I have painted my, I have swept, mopped, and painted every inch of my bomb shelter that I'm staying in, um, uh, so that I can see dirt and, you know, uh, make sure to clean it up as soon as possible. Okay, we're going to take a nice size fork full of California garlic, toss that in with our rice mix. Um... Get my rag wipe off my fork. 
Okay. Um, and then we're going to add some more cheese. Uh, this is for flavor, texture, and as a binding agent as well. Um, so we get a good sized handful of shredded Mexican cheese and make sure to break it up and sprinkle it with your hands um, so that it mixes in well. We got our fork, mix together our rice and cheese and mayonnaise and garlic and um, as much as we possibly can. So we want a good solid mix here. Mm -hmm. Good, solid mix here. Now, we're going to head over to the stove and I'm going to pause you for a second here. And okay, so this is the Gas One propane or butane stove. Um, for the price of $19.99, you can pretty much get it anywhere. Uh, Walmart carries them, Long's carries them, any CVS store usually carries them uh, in the camping sections. Um, they take uh, portable butane gas range fuel. Uh, it's uh, similar to a um, butane tank, a butane can that you'd refill a lighter with. Um, now, uh, the canister goes in the side. Uh, you want to make sure the little locking mechanism clips into the uh, slot in the canister, in the top of the canister. Close that, um, and then you turn your stove on. You do that by pushing the lever down in front, and then turning the dial all the way till it clicks. It has an automatic lighter in it. Um, one of the things that I failed to notice when I first got it was lighting it with a lighter for two months. <laughs> um, you want to turn your flame down without the pot on the stove um, so you get an accurate uh, idea of what kind of temperature you're running at. Uh, I'm going to be running at medium heat here so I put it on a medium flame. Uh, putting my pot on there. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit of cooking oil. And uh, one of the wonderful things about uh, the food bank is uh, they occasionally get in big things. And I have a huge thing of cooking oil that I got from them. So we have plenty of cooking oil for a long time. Okay, now we're going to take our sausage and asparagus mix. Uh, we're going to let that heat up here. Um, mm -hmm, to a nice uh, temperature. Um, okay, let that heat up because we want to uh, caramelize our sausage and asparagus. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, how are you guys doing? Uh, as you can see, I'm doing wonderful. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't give you time to answer there. Uh, well, not really expecting you to answer, but I do uh, want to know how you're doing, so please let me know how you're doing in the comments. Uh, okay, so we're up to a decent temperature, uh, and we're going to take our slotted spoon and empty our sausage and asparagus. There we go, nice temperature. You hear that? That's how you know you're up to a temperature where you can caramelize and the oil sizzles when you drop food in. Okay. Now, okay, that's actually a good view. I like that. Um, so we get it in there and we'll let that uh, caramelize for about two minutes. I'm gonna pause you guys so we don't make the video too long. 
Okay, so now that we have a deep, rich caramel color on our sausage and our asparagus bits are looking bright green, um, which means they're cooked, uh, we are going to add our mushrooms. Give them a couple more dice cuts just to make sure. Okay. Now we want the mushrooms to cook long enough to kill any bacteria. Um, and absorb some of that oil. But we don't want to bruise them too much. So we just give them a nice little coating. Nice little stir. And the bacteria can only be on the outside, so we don't have to worry about internal temperature here. Um, and then we are going to add uh, our rice mixture. Uh -huh. Now, I'm only going to use, well, no, actually, about half the leftover rice that I have. Um, because it's plenty to uh, stuff the uh, peppers and the mushroom with, and I want to, uh, well, I want to use the rice in something else. Maybe I'll get some hamburger and make some pan fried meatloaf. Um, anyway, we'll figure it out uh, what we'll do with the leftover rice. We'll give it a nice stir, make sure everything's evenly mixed. We want it to get up to 160 degrees throughout. So we're going to put the lid on, take the pan off for a second, turn the runner down to a nice low flame, and we'll let it sit on low for 10 minutes and get it uh, all to 160 degrees. And while we do that, I'm gonna pause you Okay, so you might have noticed that uh, I have cleaned up my workspace. Um, a clean workspace is a happy workspace, uh, especially when you're living a, uh, out in a bomb shelter or the woods uh, and you wanna keep everything bacteria free. So make sure you wash your tools uh, in between use. Um, heat everything up to proper temperatures to avoid food poisoning. Um, okay, so I have washed my portobello mushroom cap thoroughly. Uh, this is the only part that's not going to be heated uh, to temperature to kill uh, bacteria. I have also removed the gills from it to uh, incorporate more space for the stuffing. I have washed my bell peppers. They are going to be heated and cooked again. So we're going to stuff those now. Um, mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Carefully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want them nice and full. Yeah, put him over here where he can balance better. Uh -huh. I don't like the fact that I dropped um, on my cutting board, but I'll clean it up in a second. Now when we work over the pot. Alright. Also remember to keep your hands clean. Um, Especially when cooking, but it's pretty much a good idea to keep your hands clean all the time. Keep from getting sick. If you get sick on the streets, uh, it can lead to death. Uh, and a common cold can kill. Okay. Now 
Ну, да. I am attracting moths apparently because um, I've got lights on at night. It's a bad thing. Okay, and it looks like I have made the perfect amount of stuffing for everything. Now I am going to clean out my pot and my cutting board and pause you guys uh, and we'll get back when I'm ready to cook the peppers. Okay, so like I said, we don't have an oven out here at camp and I want stuffed bell peppers and you got to sort of cook stuffed bell peppers. So what I have decided is I'm going to steam them. Uh, and for that, we'll turn our stove on. Adjust it to a fairly low heat. I also coated the uh, bottom of the pan with a little bit of oil um, so that uh, I don't um, mush the bottom of the peppers too much. I want them to uh, cook for a little bit um, so, that, uh, so that the stuffing doesn't fall through the bottom when I pull them out. Okay, um, now I hear that sizzling sound, means the bottom of the peppers are getting caramelized a bit. Uh, I'm going to add, oh, please don't fall. And if I do this right, um, the peppers should level out a bit uh, when they cook. Um, they'll soften and level out, level out and they'll stay upright a little bit better. Um, Okay. Now, I'm adding just enough water to barely cover the bottom of the pan. I'm going to turn the temperature up for a second here, all the way, and try and get it to uh, boiling. And then we'll turn it back to, down to a low temperature. Lid on to keep the steam in. And turn it down to a fairly low temperature. And we're going to leave that for about 15 minutes and then we'll get back to you. Okay. Um, so we have got the uh, bell pepper cooked nicely, we've got the mushroom ready, and now we're going to plate. And, um, you know, for those of you who are, like, you know, not worried about presentation and uh, stuff like that, um, presentation is important, especially if it's just for you. And even if you're eating on a styrofoam plate, in a bomb shelter underground in an undisclosed location in the field. Uh, plating is, is important. You want your meal to reflect what you would like to be. Um, so I'm going to take and gently slice the portobello down the middle here. And we're going to do a simple plate. And how does that look? 
beautiful stuffed portobello cat and a beautiful stuffed bell pepper. And trust me, both of them are delicious. I want to thank you all for watching this uh, first ever episode of Cooking with Your Homeless Friend Kai. Um, and uh, I wanted to encourage you that when, you know, if you have leftover, like, anything, uh, put it back in your pot, uh, bring it to a nice temperature, um, and put the lid on it, and then let it cool. Uh, if you kill all the bacteria and and that's in it and keep the lid on it it will last uh, a lot longer um, do your best to keep your uh, food and utensils clean your cooking area clean uh, avoid po food poisoning if you can um, it's not a pleasant thing um, I want to thank uh, all my donors uh, oh, darn it I forgot I was gonna do the list of them um, but unfortunately I, uh, left my tablet, uh, somewhere out of range, and for the life of me, I don't know where I put my crutches. It gotta be somewhere where I can reach with the chair, but I don't see them. Anyway, um, again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please, um, like, share, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, hit the subscribe button. It's very important that I get subscribers. Um, and uh, yeah, God bless and keep you all. Thanks for watching.